forever. Amen. Jesus is risen. Alleluia. Alleluia. Please turn off or silence all electronic devices. Leaders are needed for the rosary before the masses during the month of May. Look for the sign-up poster in the vestibule of the church. Next Sunday is Divine Mercy Sunday. Confessions will begin at 2.30 p.m. and the Divine Mercy Chaplet and devotions begin at 3 p.m. <clears throat> Coffee and donuts will be available in the pack next Sunday after Mass. There will be two offerings today. The first is the Easter offering. The second is the regular Sunday offering. Today, we celebrate the resurrection of the Lord. The readings can be found in the Holy Missal on page 196. We remember in our prayers the Easter intentions of this Mass. Jesus is risen. As we celebrate the resurrection, we have the opportunity to live according to the truth that Jesus remains present to us today. Allow his presence to be evident in your faith witness, in your thoughts, words, and deeds. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, our risen Lord, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with you. We prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries by calling to mind our sins and asking the Lord's forgiveness and pardon. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. <clears throat> Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me. 
May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who on this day, through your only begotten Son, have conquered death and unlocked for us the path to eternity, grant that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection may, through the renewal brought by your Spirit, raise up in the light of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak and said, You know what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. He are, we are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. This man God raised on the third day and granted that he be visible, not to all people, but to us, the witnesses chosen by God in advance, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. To him, all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. 
The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, if then you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of what is above, not of what is on earth. For you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ your life appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. The word of the Lord.
Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. On the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb early in the morning, while it was still dark, and saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved, and told them, they have taken the Lord from the tomb, and we don't know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial cloths there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial cloths there, and the cloth that had covered his head, not with the burial cloths, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in, the one who had arrived at the tomb first, and he saw and believed. For they did not yet understand the scripture that he had to rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today we join in blessing of children and their Easter baskets. So if any children brought their Easter baskets, I invite you to come up. And if you happen to forget it, if your baskets aren't with you, children, if you still want to come up for a blessing, that is fine. There's a tradition in Rome when, when the Holy Father has an audience in St. Peter's Square and all the people are there, the, the blessing goes out for any religious items that people might have. And they say it also includes, if you've got something in your hotel room, it, the blessing goes beyond all, all time and space. So uh, in a sense, if you forgot your basket today, children, don't worry about it the blessing will count even if it's still at home. So, any children? Any adults? <laughs> You're welcome to come forth. If you need to bring mom or dad with you, that's fine. I think our ushers uh, might help. We have a few jelly beans in the aisle, so. <laughs> okay, boys and girls, the baskets that you have with you or at home, they certainly are. Uh, they, they call to mind the great joy and the happiness that we celebrate on this great day. And we rejoice because our Lenten sacrifices and our fasts are now complete, and we rejoice in the great news that Jesus is risen from the dead. So even as children, we can celebrate in the context of family love the great message of our faith. And so just as you gather with family and friends to share a meal at home, the food and all that we enjoy expresses that joy and gratitude. I think of the colored eggs and, and the flowers, remind us of, of the beauty that is all around us that God created. I think of the chocolates and jelly beans in your baskets or in the aisle that uh, they are, <laughs> they remind us of the sweetness and the joy that God brings us in life. So the baskets are full of treats and boys and girls, it's a reminder that we are to share what we have with others as others have shared them with us. And so let us pray. Father, thank you for all your blessings, especially on this Easter morning. Thank you for our lives, our families and friends, 
and most especially the joy of the news that Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. We ask you to bless these children, their parents and families, bless their Easter baskets with the sweets and treats to help them enjoy life. Be joyful and always willing to share with others. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. We now have a blessing on all you, all of you, all of your homes and all your baskets. Now the deal is, Father gets to select something from all your Easter baskets, right? <laughs> That's okay because I was looking, there's still one hidden in the rectory. I didn't find it yet. I don't know where the other priests and the deacons hid it, but I'll find it later today, so there will be treat. God bless you boys and girls, okay? You may return to your pews and all your family. My Easter morning got off to a rousing start today. Early this morning, I awoke and I remembered I needed something that was in the sacristy. So early on, I came down, uh, opened the door, and church alarm went off. <laughs> Forgot to turn it off, so I went back, punching in the codes on the phone, and everything set. So as I was punching the keys, I happened to reset the alarm. <laughs> Came in a second time. The alarm goes off. Back on the phone again. Everything settled, so I thought, okay, now I'll just go have my bowl of Cheerios. And as I did, I just turned to see what was happening on the news. Haven't watched much television, as you can imagine, during this Holy Week. And there's the blurb. New York Times, an op-ed today, give up God. I'm disappointed I don't have a subscription because I would have canceled it <laughs> then and there. Give up God, how dare they on Easter morning? as our Jewish friends celebrate Passover, and I think our Muslim friends, Ramadan, God is to be given up. Give up God? I don't think so. Give up the New York Times, yeah. Because God in Easter is all about hope, and this is why. We do live in a troubled world, and the quote from the op-ed said, God is responsible for horrors like wars and violence and oppression and suffering, so it's time to do away with him. I don't think so. We do live in a troubled world, and the trouble started on that first Easter morning, Jesus, the Messiah, the great King, was executed. He was crucified, and they buried him. And so early that morning, Mary Magdalene, a very close and dear friend, goes in the hopes of anointing the body. She is walking to the cemetery to pay respects to a murdered friend. And so her heart was very heavy, I'm sure, as you can imagine. And so when she gets and sees that the tomb is empty, her next thought, it didn't turn to great joy, it was, who stole the body? And I'm going to find out. And so she's very worried, all the more in concern. And then the Lord appears. And then she goes and shares the news with the apostles. And where are they? Peter and the others. A troublesome day for them as well. They're hiding. They were afraid what happened to Jesus was going to happen to them. 
So they're hiding out of fear. And then when they hear the news, Peter needs to go investigate for himself. And John, the very author of the gospel we just heard proclaim, says, I'm going to go with you. And so the two investigators go to the tomb and we see that they find the tomb empty. They believe. They didn't understand with their mind, but they believed. And why did they believe? Because the prophets foretold all that would happen. Jesus told them all that would happen. I think it's interesting that of all the events in the life of Jesus Christ, there were always human witnesses. Certainly, our blessed mother, when it was announced, she would be the mother of God. And then at the time of the birth, Joseph and, and those who were present, those who came to witness um, the infant in the, in the manger. So people were there and witnessed. And all throughout his life, all the things that Jesus did, his teaching, his miracles, his ascension, all those great events had witnesses, except for what we celebrate today. No eyes witnessed the resurrection. And why? So we could believe. Our faith tells us to believe. No one person witnessed the resurrection because we all witnessed the power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. How? Every time we gather to celebrate the Eucharist, the miracle of the real presence of Jesus Christ, the bread and the wine become his body and blood. Every time we go into the confessional and say, these are my sins, the miracle of the Lord's forgiveness comes to us, the mercy of God. God is very much alive. We just need to cooperate with that message. We don't give up God. We commit ourselves more deeply to the power of our faith in Jesus Christ in what we celebrate this day. So in a sense, we are all at the tomb today, just like Mary Magdalene and Peter and John when they went to the tomb. You come here to Mass today, we are all at the tomb. And we depart from the empty tomb when our liturgy is complete, having been nourished with the bread of life. We go, and as did they, share the good news. We do live in a troubled world, and I can't help but think of anything this week and today except through the lens of what is happening in the Ukraine. Came across an article written 1962, but very up to date, and it had to do with Easter basket tradition in the Ukraine. This is taken from the Tacoma Sunday Ledger. Just want to read what was written then. The Easter customs with Ukrainian people are rich in heritage. Their love of beauty can be seen in their hand embroidered cloths, in their folk songs, in their beautifully decorated houses, Easter is when their faith comes to life in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Everyone gathers at the front of the church on Easter day with food for the priests to bless, offering to one another colored eggs and begging forgiveness for past wrongs. Each family brings a basket to be blessed on Easter morning following the resurrected mass, sometimes as early as 2 a.m. Thank you for not ringing the doorbell at 2 a.m. The baskets usually contain a pasca, bread with elaborate dough ornamentation, colorful pasanki eggs, meats, cheeses, butter, horseradish. The horseradish to remind the people of Christ's bitter ordeal before his death. Covering the basket would be mother's most beautifully embroidered cloth. A candle would signify new life. The parishioners would wait for the blessing and then return home for a good rest. Described in 1962, what do you think 
the Ukraine looks like this Easter morning. Many would say, give up God. That is not the answer. All those images that we see on television, bombed out cities and homes, roads, people, where is God? God is there. We need to open our eyes. The tomb is empty. He is risen from the dead. And this came to light a number of years ago and I shared this story in the past, but it had such an impression on me. I had the opportunity quite a number of years ago to go on a medical relief mission to the area of Bosnia, Herzegovina, and people, just like today, they were lost. They were moved from their homeland. They were refugees. And we went to a refugee camp where people were living in railroad cars. And some of them, when we went as visitors, taking food and things, they came out to greet us. And this one little old lady, I'll never forget her. She said, they took everything from us, our homes, our belongings, but they cannot take our faith. I will never, ever forget her words. So our faith is always with us to strengthen us in the midst of the world and all the challenges we face. Today, many stand at the tomb. They might be dazed. They might be confused. They might be angry. They or we might be questioned or all the qualities expressed. I trust that through it all, we can have Easter joy. I had a rousing start to the day. The church alarm went off because I went where I wasn't supposed to go at that time. And those alarms go off in our lives when we do the same, where we go, when we go, where we should not go. We're always called to retreat, to come back and celebrate what we call to mind today. Today, the tomb is where we are supposed to go. It's empty because God is alive. Jesus is risen. Alleluia, alleluia. Oh, please rise. Our profession of faith today takes the form of the baptismal promises, the renewal, a response to the six questions which were answered for us at the time of our baptism by our parents and godparents or by ourselves later in life. Following that, we have the blessing with holy water which recalls the power of our baptisms on this Easter day. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal Mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so, let us now, now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism by which we once renounce Satan and all his works and promise to serve God in his holy Catholic Church. And so I ask, do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of God's children? Do you renounce the lure of evil so that sin may have no mastery in you? Do you renounce Satan, the author and prince of sin? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead and is now seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting? May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, Keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus, our Lord, for eternal life. Amen.
On this Easter day, we rejoice in Christ's triumphant, his triumph over death. Let us offer now our petitions to our Heavenly Father. That our Holy Father, Pope Francis, lead the Church faithfully in his witness to the joy of the resurrection. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the risen Lord to change hearts and end all violence and war, especially in Ukraine, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the newly baptized and confirmed, and all of us, flourish in the sacramental life of the Church, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who are doubting their faith or walking in darkness will experience the risen Lord who brings hope to all souls in need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Christ's abundant mercy to bring healing and peace to all. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died this week, including Peter Keschel and Geraldine Albright, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Easter intentions we remember in this Mass, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O oh Lord, hear the prayers of your people, those spoken and those in our hearts, as we rejoice in the glorious resurrection of your beloved Son, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hand. For our good of all this holy church. O Lord, exultant with paschal joy, we offer the sacrifice by which your church is wonderfully reborn and nourished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day, above all, to Lord you, Lord you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been raised. He is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Overcome with paschal joy, every land and people exult in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we humbly make prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer to you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Alfred, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here whose faith and devotion is known to you alone. For them we offer you this sacrifice, for they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in the hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating that most sacred day of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Sletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas, and Damian, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you also for those to whom it has been pleased to give new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, granting them forgiveness of all their sins, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect, make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, 
giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. <clears throat> the mystery of faith. As we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion and resurrection from the dead and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son our Lord we your servants and your holy people offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts you have given us this pure victim this holy victim this spotless victim the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hand of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us, marked with a sign of faith, and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, we hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord, you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold Jesus, our risen Lord, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be.
Let us pray. O God, look upon your church with unfailing love and favor, so that renewed by the Paschal mysteries, she may come to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Just wishes uh, from all those in the rectory uh, blessings on this great Easter day and great joy to you and all your family and all your loved ones, um, that we are certainly blessed in so many ways. Easter joy and blessing. Special thanks to all those who do so much during the, this Holy Week as well as all throughout the year, the ministers of the altar, the clergy, the choirs, um, all the way around so many. We are, we are so blessed. Let us be grateful for all God's blessings. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. May Almighty God bless you through today's solemn Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. And may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten Son endow you with immortality. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exalting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. May Almighty, the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, alleluia. Thanks be to God, alleluia, alleluia. Saint Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, pass into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who travel about the world seeking the ruin of soul. Amen. And the heart.